So, we had a new kid. And my wife and I are trying to play games again with each other because it's been uh, it was super hard for the last few months just because she was tired and nauseous and I guess like having laying on chairs kind of hard yeah <laughs> like, yeah yeah uh, but we are slowly getting back to it and she's really sweet she's like making an effort because she knows how much I miss playing games with her so she's actually making an effort to play games and it's great so we had these really grandiose ideas I was gonna learn anachrony again and we were wow, gonna play anachrony. big games like anachrony uh, and I also had uh, city of iron out as well okay and then we're like okay hold up this is not this is not coming kind of because of time uh because we'd have to like learn one night and then play uh, it quickly again uh after that and it's just with time it's not going to work so what we did is we we found smaller games now not like super small but a good way to where we could learn again and play it and then play multiple times we we're trying to play games 3 times in a row before we play another game. Mm. And the game we started doing that with was Risk Star Wars Edition. Dang. Now, oh man. Now, have you played this game at all? I have not. I've heard of Risk Star okay. Wars Edition, but I have not played it. Please regale me. I will. This game, oh, I love this game. Okay, so this is nothing to, it has nothing to do with Risk. Uh, it's just the the label for marketing. It is published by Hasbro, uh, designed by multiple people, uh, James Delosio, Austin Rucker, and Craig Von Ness. Ness? Von Ness. Sorry about that. Uh, and the artist is Kevin Hill. Uh, this game is the end of Return of the Jedi, where there are three simultaneous battles happening at the same time. You have your final battle between Vader and Luke. You have Han uh, and uh, his band of Ewoks or whatever trying to get the shields down uh, so the battle in space so those ships can take down the uh, in progress Death Star okay and so you're managing these three battles all at once and it's actually a uh, super simple game uh, each player has a different deck of cards so one person is the rebels one person is the uh, are the Imperials and they have a deck of cards, and each card will have one to three actions on it, and those actions will just correlate with one of the three battles happening at the same time. So the trick is to balance these battles back and forth. Uh, for the the rebel player to win, they have to get a track all the way to the top, which is the uh, Hans uh, group um, taking down the shield, and so that has to get all the way to the top, which is symbolizes them taking down the shield for the Death Star. Once that happens, a ship has to be next to the Death Star, and a six has to be rolled, and the Death Star blows up. Uh, and then the Imperials win by taking out every ship of the Rebels out on the board as well. And so that's all they have to do. Now the Vader and Luke battle goes on. You play a card to attack as one of those. And there's a lot of dice rolling in this game, so there is kind of a lot of luck according to the, the, the dice. But it is a Hasbro Risk titled game, so that makes sense. Uh, but... It's such a smooth playing game and a quick playing game. And the tension of all these three battles happening. Oh, sorry. In the middle is the space battle where there's different zones and you're moving ships. The Imperials have an Executor and a bunch of TIE Fighters. And the the Rebels have B-Wings and Y-Wings and X-Wings uh, flying around as well. Also, the board is shaped like a TIE Fighter, which is just fantastic. That's the, cute. the two tracks, it's cute. The Vader-Luke track is on one side. The... Um, taking down the shield is on one side and in the middle is the space with the the death star in the middle so the the production value is just great especially for a hasbro game now there are two versions of this game out there's the the normal version the like it's like 15 bucks or 20 bucks it's super cheap uh and then you have like the black series edition which i think full retail is 30 bucks but it often goes on as 50 bucks sorry uh but it often goes on sale for 30 bucks and it's that's just a, a component jump where you're playing with uh like an actual Falcon miniature and like a Death Star miniature and other things like that. I actually don't really remember the differences between the two, but I cannot speak highly enough of this game, especially for just a quick two-player game that gives you a very uh, full experience in 30 minutes or wow. less. I think a game maybe took us 45 minutes once. That Like our first game back, we played it a bunch maybe a year ago it's you know it's an, it's an older game uh 
but coming back and playing it again, the first game took took 45 minutes, and then our, our next game took like 20 to 30 minutes. But just the tension is so, so great. And the theme, it just works great. This was a re-implementation of a game called The Queen's Gambit, which I think was a similar theme, but it was episode one for Star Wars instead of A Return of the Jedi. And so I actually don't know what those three battles were that you were balancing, but I think the board was even like 3D or something like that. I yep. don't remember. Yeah. But this game, I just, I cannot recommend highly enough. I think it's pretty easy to find, uh, pretty cheap on Amazon or other, uh, where other Hasbro games are sold. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, I was also surprised that this is a game my wife would like, because this is not her style of game at all, right? It's not a Euro. It's not just kind of a thinky game. It's just, you're just chucking dice and flying around each other. And it's, it's just, it's fun. It's great. Is this something that you think you'd be interested in playing? Uh, I try it. That's for sure. Yeah. But not immediately. No, I just the game. No, I can't see myself really. I think going out and seeking a copy personally. I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, it it definitely sounds a lot more intriguing than if I were to see it on the shelf. I'm, I enjoy the star Wars IP. However, I'm not necessarily in love with it. I, I could kind of take it or leave it. I enjoy this. You know, the, the movies that come out like episode, seven and eight i liked Mm -hmm. and i saw them eventually and i'm not too hardcore about it so i'm not going to necessarily go out and seek a a star wars game per se however one thing i do want to make mention of that kind of uh that hit my brain right away is the fact that if you have these three different planes right Mm -hmm. this brought on an idea that i think a lot of people have had but if you consider what fantasy flight has been doing with their star wars series you have Armada, X-Wing, Imperial Assault, Destiny. Yes. Like, wouldn't it be, like, there was this idea that I was telling my friend, like, wouldn't it be weird or cool if, like, you had all three, like, all those games going on simultaneously? <laughs> so, be, like. It would be nuts. Oh, it'd be disgustingly nuts. Like. Yeah. But that's what it seems like this game has done, is it says, let's take the idea of Armada slash X-Wing on a very broad scale, right? Like it definitely doesn't have any of the mechanics of such. Then you bring it back down to, well, you have at least the Luke Sky, like what were the levels again? You have the Han Solo shield taking down Mm -hmm. and then you have Luke Vader battle, Luke Vader battle battle. And then just the, the the space battle in the middle. Okay. Yeah. So this was definitely more like an X-Wing. Yeah. Definitely Armada X-Wing, you know, Mm -hmm. more of like a destiny versus say like a, you know, one V one battle than in an imperial assault alas yeah. um what yeah that it seems to really kind of make that dream come true yeah it's just fun because it's so quick uh it's it's just so meaty like i feel like there's a lot of decisions even though there is a lot of randomness with dice it's still trying to um manage those those three and so like it's fun playing with the same person over and over again because if one thing doesn't work in one game, just try something else in the in the other game, and it's it's pretty well balanced. I think we've won as both uh, both factions, and you can try different things. Like in one, I just went whole hog on the space battle, and I just wanted to see if that would work, and I actually got pretty close. I didn't win, but it was mm-hmm. still pretty close. Uh, and I think with the IP, I think the IP will help draw people into this game if they're into into Star Wars. I think uh, labeling it as a risk game does it a disservice because mm. I think that sets expe- expectations wrong on two accounts. If someone's not a big board gamer and they see risk, they're going to expect a risk game Right. where this is not a risk game. And if you have uh, people who are invested into board games and enjoy playing board games like ourselves and they see risk, they're going to have expectations and kind of have like a, a negative connotation towards risk, uh, just like the base level mm-hmm. risk. Right. Yeah. So I think either way, I don't think it's a, great label uh, a great label for it uh but uh, i could be wrong they that may be the reason why it did well i think it did well i think it still it still sells i don't know but it's yeah it's fun that's I a, dig it. that's a really good observation i really think that's what had initially veered me off a little bit is the yeah. fact that it was kind of a risk-esque like game and that i think the expectation of risk is that it's it's risk. It's risk. It's I mean, risk. I've, I've never been a risk fan. I played it a few times when I was younger. I got through a mission and a half of risk legacy before I just stopped caring and mm. opened everything and then was severely disappointed. Uh, Did you open which, the one, that one envelope at the bottom? I, that you're not supposed I, to. 
I did open that one envelope and What's... I ate it. It told me not to open it. I opened it and I ate it because that's what you were supposed to do, right? You're supposed to eat the components. I don't no? know, but, okay. s- but spoilers no. for those people potentially because I don't know what it is. Like it still comes you up. You don't eat it. I was joking. It does not say that. Hey, eat the you know what? At this point, I don't even know, man. Like it could have <laughs> just been like that, like baseball gum. You have no idea. That's true. It's it could have just, just been there has... <laughs> risk baseball gum. It has like the the nutrition facts on the back of the the risk legacy box. You're like what what kind of game is this? Why is it so full of sodium? That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be incredible. I would totally get like a like a food yeah like food <laughs> legacy game like yeah <laughs> roll a dice. That's the food you eat. Just <laughs> like rip it up oh, when you're done. <laughs> like oh. just it's just man. You suck. Anyway, That's fun dumb. game. Risk Star Wars Edition by Hasbro.